Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ara. Welcome back to yet another Bought and Forgot. I could very easily do multiple videos of Bought and Forgot. I am ashamed, but here I am. And some of these things I bought and used once or twice and then stuck them in a drawer and forgot I bought them. And just for some housekeeping, this eye look is in a separate video. Everything on my face is listed down below if you click on those links to make a purchase. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate you more than you know. Otherwise, let's just play with these things that have been waiting too long collecting dust. Welcome back to yet another bought and forgot. Not everything here I completely forgot about. Some of them I used like once or twice and forgot, including the Milk Makeup Foam Grip Primer, the Cloud Glow Foam Primer. This one I used it quite a bit when I first got it and then I just kind of like put it in a drawer somewhere and kept on going. My eyes are already done. This is in a separate video. This one will be up, well honestly, I don't know if it's gonna be up before this one or after. But I figured why not pull this one out again? I liked how hydrating it felt and give it a whirl. My skin's been a really dry. I've been working my butt off to make it not dry. I do need to do a touch of color correcting. So I'm gonna do that really quickly cause I am like super red around my chin. Skin's been really flaky and dry. Honestly, I don't know how much coverage my foundation's gonna give me so this is important. I am guilty of buying things with all the best intentions. So here we are again. This is a cushion foundation. This is the Dior Forever Perfect Cushion in the shade 1CR. It has a shelf life of 12 months. You can't really get a lot of the cushion foundations here in America. I bought mine off of Selfridges. I don't remember when. I haven't taken, I haven't taken this off yet. I haven't even touched it. I know the shade is right based off of all my other shades. So this is satisfying. Cushion foundations are super popular in Asia and in parts of Europe. So satisfying. But me, I love cushion foundations. The ones that I do have, they are incredible and highly underrated. I bought it and I completely forgot about it. I put it in a drawer. The last one I wore on camera, I think was the Sicily Cushion Powder, Cushion Foundation, not powder. And I loved it. So I'm gonna pick this up on my Sephora sponge here and just kind of work that in. I like picking up cushion foundations on a sponge. I feel like they work a lot better. I don't know why I never pulled this out to play with it when I bought it. I, I've got no excuses for myself. I always have the best intention when I buy my makeup, but then stuff happens, life happens, and I don't get around to it. So don't judge me too harshly. Actually, save your judgment for yourself. All right. Judgment-free makeup zone. I was expecting this to be more of a light coverage but it's looking like a light medium. Okay, it's a lot prettier than the Charlotte Tilbury for starters, cause that was the last foundation I reviewed. And this isn't really a review. It's just, I bought it and I need to play with it. Let's be honest. We all do things in hindsight we probably should not do and buying makeup and forgetting about it is something I should not do. <laughs> There's not a strong scent to this, so that's good. I'm gonna have to compare this to the other Dior foundations I have in the same shade. It looks a touch darker than the 1CR that I have in everything else. But honestly, I don't know if this oxidizes or not, so maybe it does and I'm just crazy. Either way though, on first impressions, beautiful packaging, finish is very pretty. I'd say that's a solid medium coverage. Absolutely gorgeous. I like the Huda Faux Filter Concealer. I just haven't used it in so long and I used it only a couple times when I did buy it because there were a couple other found foundations, that, concealers, not foundations that came out that I liked more. So this kind of goes into that category. Not quite, but kinda. But I do like it. I felt like it was a touch too heavy for my under eyes. So I'm gonna give that a go again today. I'm gonna use my Sigma F67 brush to help blend it out. Love this brush. Now 
And since I did my eye makeup first, I'm gonna try to be careful to not bring my concealer up too high. Sometimes I can be really guilty of doing that. Surprisingly though, the foundation is sitting really nice on my forehead. I'm gonna go ahead and powder my under eyes. The one that I'm gonna use today, the powder anyway, is a touch too heavy for my under eyes, so I'm gonna use my Dior Lavender Powder. Bought and forgot the Lancome Long Time No Shine. I have mine in the shade Translucent. I wore it once or twice and then forgot about it because it's not my specific type of powder. I like powders that are more luminous. This is definitely more matte but it's great for summer. It is really, really good for summer. If you have trouble controlling your oils, this powder is sensational. And I'm gonna use a very light dusting of this on a Fantasy Cosmetica F04 brush. I don't really need a whole lot. I'm not trying to overly dry out my face. And I do normally spray with a little setting spray before I powder, but I forgot. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to do stuff that I actually intend to do and oh well. As long as I go in lightly with this, it's actually a really nice powder. It's not too heavy for me. It's a little more heavy than I would like, but a soft touch, it does just right. Like I can still see some luminosity to my skin. I don't think it's too drying. I just have to be careful how much I use of it. I struggled with the Sisley bronzer quite a bit when I first bought it. I only wore it once. One time for such an expensive bronzer, I think it's like $125. This is the Fido Touch. Um, Sun Glow Bronzing Gel Powder. Everything has such a long name. I only wore it one time. I struggled with it because either I didn't have the right brush or I felt like it was too hardly pressed and I just never wore it again and I had every intention to. So this is a Sephora, F I believe it's a 50 brush. I'm gonna use this ever so gently because I know it's just a little bit deep for my skin tone. Keep it further back. I know a lot of people compare this to the Chantecai bronzer. I feel like the Chantecai bronzer was always easier for me to use. This one, not so much, but that one just looked so lovely on the skin. And there's like three different shades for Chantecai and I think this is the only one for Sicily. Second impressions, I still think I like this the Chantecai more. I'm still not, I don't know. There's something about this formula I think is overhyped. Way too overpriced, but it feels overhyped. It just does. Blush is entirely, I've got no excuse because I love blush. This is the MAC New Romance Mineralized Blush. I love all of the mineralized blushes from MAC that I own. I bought this one because it's a very soft, pinky, peachy color, and I never played with it. And I, well, if I did, I think I only did once, but it was so long ago. This is a Prados Beauty Blush Brush. I have not worn this shade in so long. There is such a beautiful, soft, luminous glow to the mineralized blushes. And I love this color. I think the last time I did use it, because I think I only wore it one time. And I think the last time I wore it, I was just so caught up in all the new products that had come out. I forgot all about this one. Yeah, I definitely wore it at least once. But I forgot all, all about it because MAC hasn't been in the forefront for so long. And then I just went through all of my blushes last night and realized I need to play with my MAC because MAC is like the OG of blushes. I mean, look at that. That's a gorgeous shade. I love my MAC blushes. There's some things in the MAC lineup that are just always a hit and the blushes are one of them. And I just don't play with them enough. I have so many of them. I need to just play with them more often. I'm guilty. The Natasha Denona Pastel Pixie Glow Highlighter. Okay, I know it's not the most flattering highlighter for my skin and wasn't the most well received, but it is still a beautiful highlighter. Definitely need to play with it a little more often. I wouldn't call this a multi-glow highlighter because of the way it's made, but I like the pinky green shift to it when you pick it up on a brush all together. Swirl your brush around inside there. It is very beautiful. The formula is what makes it better. Before I finish my face with my lipstick, I'm gonna take my Chantecaille Radiant Glow Blur Powder. I was not overly fond of this. When it launched, it looks like a beautiful pink powder and the reviews made it look stunning, like it was gonna be like my Lotus Powder, but it's, it's really not like the Lotus Powder at all. This one does have a very subtle shimmer to it, which 
There is a subtle shimmer in here. If you don't like shimmer, don't play with this one. But for a finishing powder, I do not like shimmers in my finishing powders whatsoever. I like them to be luminous, but not like this. So I don't really pull out this powder often because of that. It's a beautiful formula. I think the formula is absolutely stunning and it provides me the luminosity that I like. This is just a Sonia G cheek brush, classic cheek. I just don't want that shimmer all over my face. Outside of the subtle shimmer to it, it is very beautiful. It does make my face look blurred, not like the Lotus powder, but lipstick, I'm gonna use the Dior Rouge 737. This is in the shade Mystere. I wore it one time for a swatch video and then I, I just never pulled it out again and played with it. So I'm gonna use this one today. I bought the Give Beauty pencil sometime back. This is in the shade Anaheim Line. Haven't worn it, I've only ever swatched it. So I'm gonna wear this one today. Ooh, the formula is really nice. I had to clean up my horrendous line work off camera, but that's okay. Oh, I love this shade. I forgot how much I loved it when I swatched it in that video. And I just feel like the Dior lipsticks don't get the hype they deserve. So pretty. Oh, it works so great with that pencil too. I'm gonna try to blend this in a little bit with my fingers. Ah, this shade is just so fun. I don't get to wear it enough. I really, really need to play with it more often. It just has that beautiful orange undertone. It's so subtle, but it's beautiful. Let me just spray this mug real face, finish my eyes, and then finish this off. Here is my completed look using a whole bunch of things that either I have bought and just totally forgot and stuck in a drawer or used once or twice and then stuck in a drawer. I am 100% guilty. Hopefully you guys are not like me and use your things that you buy, make better use of your money. Sometimes I am a little irresponsible. The eye look is the Natasha Denona Yucca Palette. I did use one Terra Moon Cosmetic single. That video, if you're interested, is either up before this one or after. Either way, there will be a link in the description down below if you're curious about it. Honestly, the majority of these products I like. Outside of the, the few things I had mentioned, I think my look turned out absolutely beautiful. As per always, everything on my face is linked down below. If there are things in here that are limited edition and discontinued, that will also be denoted, just so you're aware. I appreciate you guys so much for spending your day with me. Do something for yourself today because you are worth it.